my gosh, everybody. I was going to think that I wasn't going to get this <laughs> this video done today. I have been so busy this morning, but I'm really excited about this video because it's Super Sides Saturday, and that's exciting. It's in a collaboration with uh, Miss Vicki from Vicki's Country Home, Jerry from My Blind Mama's Messy Kitchen, and Katie from Heritage Ways. And yes, I had to write it down because <laughs> I can't remember nothing anymore. I can barely remember my own name half the time and my own kids' names. I get them messed up all the time. But anyways, I have to write this stuff down, so please forgive me. But I'm really excited about uh, Super Size Saturday because I feel like our sides always get kind of pushed to the side. And myself, I love the sides. A lot of times, like at Potluck or even here at home, I'll haul my plate up with the side dishes and just pick at the, the main dish. I just love them. But uh, this is really exciting. And uh, this morning, I had to go out to the greenhouse, and I had to replant all my squash plants because I started them. And within, you know, they broke soil. They started to come up. And within two days, they were this tall and getting leggy. So I had to get out there and get all them squash plants replanted in bigger pots because we can't put them out in Arkansas yet. It's going to be a while before we can get them in the garden. But anyways, that's what I've been doing this morning. I thought I have got to get in there and get this video made. But I'm really excited because one of my favorite side dishes that I really don't make a lot, and I don't know why because I really like it, is uh, pepper jack scallop potatoes. And I love scallop potatoes. So anyways, um, let's get started on the side dish, and uh, I think you're going to like it. Okie dokie, guys. Let's get started on these scalloped potatoes. I've got, uh, got a fourth of a cup of butter in my pan here, getting it melted. And I'm going to put uh, a small onion that I've chopped up. I'm going to put it in this butter, and I'm going to saute these onions till uh, they're just, you know, a little translucent. I don't want to cook them to death. I don't like to cook anything to death, but uh, so it's just going to take a couple of minutes, and uh, let that cook a little bit. And I've also got, now this is optional, you don't have to do this, but Danny and I love garlic in anything and garlic's really good for you. So I've got a teaspoon and a half of garlic that I'm gonna put in there too. So I've got a fourth of a cup of butter, a small onion diced up, and one and a half teaspoons of garlic in here. And uh, I'm gonna let that cook up just a little bit. And then when we come back I'm gonna make the uh, the white sauce. Okay. I let my onions saute just a couple minutes with a teaspoon and a half of garlic, and they're looking pretty good. So now I've got uh, a fourth of a cup of flour. I'm going to put it in here with the butter and the onions and the garlic, and uh, I'm going to cook that, let that flour cook for just a little bit. You just keep a stirring it so it doesn't burn. And this is going to uh, thicken up your your white sauce. We call it white sauce here in Arkansas. I think it's got fancier name than that. But uh, anyways, it's the same. When I'm making a homemade macaroni and cheese, I use pretty much the same recipe. Okay. What I've got in here, I've got uh, one and a, one and one fourth cup of milk. And one and one fourth cup of half and half. And uh, I'm going to pour it into my pot now. Just keep it stirring. Just keep it stirring it. Get it all in there. Now, this is going to pick up and get thicker. You don't want it too thick, but okay, I'm gonna put a teaspoon of salt. My hands are shaky today. And uh, I think I'm just gonna put about half a teaspoon 
of black pepper. Now, I wish I had white pepper because that's what I would use in something like this. Now, I'm just going to keep stirring this and I just take it a couple minutes to get to the consistency that it needs to be. So you just keep stirring it, just like you're making gravy. Okay, I had my heat on uh, set on, it was like a, it went on low, it was about medium, I guess. And it's really thickened up, starting to thicken up. You don't want it too thick, you don't want it like gravy, you just want it to start thicken up. I'm going to put my spoon in it, and the way I can tell if it's thick enough is when you put that on your back of your spoon and you run your finger through it and it doesn't run back together then it's plenty thick enough. Now I'm going to turn this off for just a minute because the burner I've got this on doesn't go low enough for me so I'm going to turn it off for a minute but you can turn your burner on low. Now at this point if you want to add some different seasoning spices just feel free because I'm going to put, actually, a little bit of thyme in mine because I just love thyme. Now, you could put you uh, a little bit of rosemary or basil or just any, any of the seasonings that you just love. Just put it in their sauce. It's going to be good. Okay, I turned the heat off. Now, what I'm going to do is I've got two cups of cheese, and I cheated. I've got pepper jack here, and then I had some cheddar that needed to be used, so I'm going to put them both in there. I'm going to put a little bit of time, and I'm going to stir it. And that cheese is going to melt. Now, I turn the... If, if you can get your burner down low enough, just leave it on low. I'm going to turn mine back on here in just a minute. I'm going to put the rest of my cheese, about two cups of cheese, whatever kind of cheese you like. Uh, Gruyere cheese is really good, but when I went to buy some, it was like $7 for like 8 ounces, and I just couldn't do it. That's ridiculous. So anyways, the pepper jack's going to be great with the cheddar. So, you see how that's all coming together. It's going to be ooey gooey and so good. It's going to melt. Actually, turning the stove, the burner off was a good idea, because I'm afraid it would have scorched it. So. There we go. Now, man, that looks so good. Look at that. Gooey, gooey, gooey. Now what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to have to bring y'all back just a little bit so you can see my pan. You know, I've got a big bar here, but sometimes it seems like you just can't get everything set up where it needs to be. Okay. Does that look good? Now, I'm using my iron skillet because I use my iron skillets for everything, and I'm hoping this one is big enough. I'm almost afraid it's not going to be. But you can use a 9 by 13 pan or just whatever you've got. And I'm going to start by layering, now I buttered the bottom of my pan, and I'm going to start layering my potatoes. And I used, I had a bag of organic gold potatoes, and that's what these are. Um, you can use russet or probably anything. I know growing up all we had was red potatoes, and we used them for everything. We made everything. Uh, red, uh, red potatoes because that's just what we had and you use what you had I'm going to put me just a little bit of pepper I like to season everything okay now all this ooey gooey goodness I'm going to pour some over this layer man that looks good <laughs> It's just that cheese is just stringing, and I'm fixing to make a mess, so just bear with me. I'm going to take the back of my spoon, and I'm just going to spread it out like this. Yeah, I may. I'm already excited. Now, I've got my oven preheated to 350. Now, I'm telling y'all, 
my oven, and I've told y'all this before, it's a gas, it's propane. And it gets, my oven gets hot. Sometimes recipes I have to lower the temp but just a little bit. But uh, you see how I've cut these potatoes up. Now, if I had a mandolin or something, I could probably get them thinner than that, but I don't. I need to get one. I think it'll be okay. This is about six potatoes. They weren't real big potatoes, but it was six. You don't want to cut your potatoes too thick or they won't get done. And I know some people that will boil their potatoes and then slice them up. That way it don't take as long for them to cook. That looks bad. But anyways, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Put me a little salt. I don't want it too salted, but because the cheese is going to be salty too. Sometimes I have to watch myself with that salt. And then some more pepper over the potatoes. And if y'all, y'all can probably see how swelled up my fingers are. I've got arthritis really bad in my hands. And I had to take my rings off because it was swelling up over my rings. I hate it, but arthritis is tough. Okay. We're going to pour the rest of this stuff that I think I could just eat with a spoon over the top. And I hope this pan's big enough. I'm real bad at getting things too full. Lori's real good at that. Try to get as much of this out as I can. This is beautiful stuff. Okay. That pan's going to be fun to get clean. All that gooey cheese on it. Okay, I'm going to try to spread this out without it going over the sides here. Y'all just don't know how excited I am. I ain't had these in a long time, and I really like them. But this is the way you make homemade macaroni and cheese, too. I had to put me a cookie sheet in the oven, just in case. Y'all know, I, I just messed up again, because... You're supposed to leave some of that cheese out to sprinkle over the top, but that's okay because I'm going to sprinkle some cracker crumbs over the top just to give it a crunch. But yes, you're supposed to leave some of that cheese out, save it back to spread over the top. So, Lori messed up. I'm sorry. But y'all do it right. And y'all do it, y'all do it right. I get ahead of myself sometimes. Anyways, this is going to give you a crunchy top. And you're not going to cover this up. You're going to let it bake 350. And like I said, the oven's very because anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes it should be done. And I'm, like I said, I'm not going to cover it up. I'm going to stick it right in the oven. So, I'm going to get it in there. And we'll be back when it's done. Okay, here it is. Pepper Jack scalloped potatoes. Just came out of the oven, 350 degrees, and it took 45 minutes, and it's good and golden brown on top. And those cracker crumbs have really gotten crunchy, crunchier, crunchier. So, looks pretty good, doesn't it? So, guys, a really good tip when you're making scalloped potatoes, make sure you cut them really thin, that way they get done. As you come too thick, they're not going to get done. But anyways, these are good. I didn't taste it of them. But uh, to Miss Vicki and Miss Jerry and Miss Katie, here's to you. And all them forgotten side dishes. That's so good. I'd do a happy dance, but I wouldn't want to embarrass my family in half of Arkansas, so... Y'all come back and see me.